people saying, oh, the YouTube templates aren't right. They're not the right size. I can't get them to line up. So we're gonna look at that. The first thing you probably wanna know is what's a banner. A banner is what you see here at the top of your YouTube page. Some people don't actually have this banner. They might wonder how you can get it on your channel. I'm going to talk about that too. And I'm going to go over how you can make sizing so that it looks great on desktop and on mobile devices. I have branded it for this channel. I love to use gradients. I've got my branded, the Creator Classroom logo. I've got my value proposition. I've got it right there so that if anybody comes to the Creator Classroom at a glance, right there at the banner, learn how to use Canva for YouTube. Very easy. And then I even have an arrow pointing down to get a free trial of Canva Pro. So if someone clicks this, they're going to be taking a page where they can get a free trial of Canva Pro. I also have it linked in every single description. I've got a little Twitter icon there too. I wanted to show you a couple other banners. And the first banner is Claire Sarah. She also has her value proposition. Subscribe to grow on YouTube. She's got a call to action here. Would you like a free channel review? Fill in this form. I will show you how to get a clickable link like this in your banner a little later on. Mary Ann has a great banner because look, her value proposition is clear. Here's a call to action. Check out these freebies. Sharon noticed that Claire has a gradient effect. It's not just a plain image back there. It's not just a plain color. There is texture back there, which makes her stand out. Marianne's background also has a texture. A plain color looks great, but when you add something with texture, it makes it look even better. A lot of people have trouble with YouTube sizing. This website, canva.com slash sizes slash YouTube, will tell you the different sizes. For example, YouTube thumbnail, you want your size to be 1280 by 720. But then when you look at this, there's something that says YouTube banner, and it gives you this size. But if you scroll down, banner and desktop display, Banner and tablet display? Banner and mobile display? Banner and TV display? What does that mean? I'm going to make it super simple for you. When you create a banner, you have to create a banner that is a size of 2560 by 1440. If you are in Canva, all you need to do is type in YouTube and then look down here is banner. There's a bunch of templates, but here in a minute, I'm going to tell you what's wrong with almost all of them. We're just going to create a blank one and that's how you get the right size. Your size is 2560 by 1440. I just showed you how to get that. What shows up on your mobile device is this 1546 by 423. All of your important information needs to be in this safe zone. I have this here and I'm going to show you how to make this and you can put it right over your banner so that you can look at this, see what's going to show on somebody's mobile device, right? This person's YouTube banner, you can't see his name. You can only see part of what it is. This is what will be seen on desktop. I made, I made one of these to go on the desktop so that I can check my banner every single time. And I'm going to type in banner because I want you to see a legit banner. And I'm going to go to projects, all categories, YouTube banner. Here we go. Here are all my banners. You're going to click R on your keyboard. And let's see, we're going to get it to 423. It's at 423 on the height, how tall it is, 423. And then we're going to go to 1546 try to get it to 1546. If it's a little over or a little under, it's not that big a deal. So I got it to 1547. So here's the middle part. What is going to help you is going to file. Now they've recently changed this file setting. 
View Settings, over here, Show Rulers and Guides. So we're going to click that. So we've got the ruler at the top and the ruler on the side. The rectangle that's the right size, 423 high, and it's about 1546 wide. We're going to position this in the center and middle. I'm going to left click my mouse right on this top ruler and bring down a guide, this purple guide, to the top of the rectangle. And then I'm going to do another one for the bottom of the rectangle. And then guess what? I'm going to do one for the left of the rectangle. And then I'm going to pull one for the right of the rectangle. Let me know if that makes sense. We're going to take the same rectangle and I'm going to move it up. And four, actually, I need to, I'm going to left click it and move it over so I don't accidentally move the guide. For the desktop one, I'm going to take this. There's a little duplicate button right there. And then I'm going to slide this one down. So this is the one, the template where I'm looking to see what the desktop's going to look like, right? I like to use the black when I'm looking at mine. We've got a rectangle, the background which is just a color, and then a rectangle. And now up here at the top, there's a share button. So you'll click that, and then you'll click download. And this is a PNG. This is where you will need Canva Pro because you need to download it with a transparent background. Now, if you don't have Canva Pro, that's okay. You can just group the rectangles together and then position them on your YouTube banner to check for it. But for me, I just, since I have Canva Pro, I'm going to use it. PNG, click for the transparent background. Because this has 19 pages, I'm going to select the current one. And I'm going to make it this color just so that it's a fun color to use. I'm going to go to Uploads right here. Click Upload File. And then it automatically goes to my downloads folder, but it's going to be wherever your downloads go. So now I'm going to take this. I've got the same thing, right, with the rectangles. And it looks like it's a rectangle with white and a rectangle. But if I change the color of this, it's transparent. What I would do at this point is go to elements and type in the word grid. So now we've got a placeholder, and it's this single placeholder. And when you click on it, it will automatically cover your banner. Left click this, and you will be able to use this on any of the banners that you create to check the size. Control X this. You can Command X if you're on a Mac. And I'm going to actually get rid of my rulers and guides, and we're just going to see if we can find a YouTube banner here that might would actually work, but a lot of them just don't work. Like this one, this is too tall, and once you do a few of these, you'll start to realize how tall these are, but you can edit them. Let's just grab this one, and now I'm going to control V it, and look, the only thing that shows is this person's name, in Finance Academy. I would take this rectangle right here and I would size this to the 1546. I would position it in the center in the middle. That way I know exactly what's going to show on a mobile device. And then I would work this template to that rectangle. That's what I would do. And then I would alternate out something for that rectangle. Like this gradient was probably over the whole document that Claire used. Mary Ann's probably was over the whole document. Mine was not over the whole document. If I go back here, it's going to be the 14. Actually, that one's, I made it a little taller because I wanted to make sure that the black wasn't going to show. Essentially, what I did was start it off with that little rectangle. And then that showed me exactly what I'm going to see on mobile device. And then I made my little gradient a little bit bigger. I got rid of my rectangle and there we go. Being that most people 
or on mobile? Should the template with the transparency only have the middle rectangle? That's a great question. I use both. We're just going to make this the right size. Actually, not that. I don't want it to be that. I want it to be in a grid and get our guides back on. And so what I would do at this point is I would just add myself. I clicked R on the keyboard for the shortcut. As, oh, I don't want to get rid of the guide. So I'm just going to duplicate this one. I'm going to make it the same color. We can do the same thing. Share, download, transparency. I'm going to get that color. We can upload it. And now we've got the one for the mobile device. So this one I can set into a grid. I'm going to control X that bad boy. There is a keyboard shortcut. I always forget it at shift R to get rid of the guides. I have not really found one much that works for mobile. This one will. I say that and it doesn't really look. The Borsell part is two, two to the left. What's the utility of setting things into a grid? Yeah, I always set it in a grid so that it won't take over the background like that. So you see how that happened now? That's the background. It took what was there away. It would just need to be moved a little bit. So here's my banner and I'm just going to download it. So download PNG. I do not need a transparent background. I'm going to go here and download. What I'm going to do is go to my dashboard. So we're going to go to, and you'd go to customization and layout, branding. Branding is where you can change your profile picture, your banner image, and you can even make your logo a video watermark as well. And you can change it and it will change no matter what. Here's where you would change it. So we would add this, change. I'm going to add the banner and this makes it look like everything's not there, but it will be. It's just the way it looks. So if it's on desktop, everything on the right side would be there. It's just not showing it in this view. This says viewable on our devices, viewable on TV, but honestly, I never see this top and bottom part on my TV. So I don't know what that's talking about, but you click done, you click publish. I want you to see that that little part actually does show, even though you don't see it. Now I'm going to go to my channel. There's the part that you couldn't see in that little preview, but it's there. And if I showed you my mobile device, all of this would be there, but you would not see this free trial of Canva Pro. Marianne does the same thing. She optimizes for her mobile audience, plan, do, review. But on her desktop, look, here she's optimized for her clickable links. Claire, same thing. Look, she's optimized for her mobile audience, but on computer, would you like a free channel review? Fill in this form. So I did the same thing. I optimized for my mobile experience, but those that are on the computer see this little special something extra. Right now, where can you add these links, these clickable links? They're not in your design. They are going to be under basic info, customization, basic info. If you scroll down, you can add a lot of links to your about page. So if I go here and go to about, if you scroll down, here are my links, free trial of Canva, the create a classroom Facebook page. There's my Koji page, right? I could add more links, but I've chosen to only promote two things. And here's where I did that. We'll update that while I'm at it. Links on banners. First two links is what I chose, but you can add up to five links on your banner. And then I'm going to go ahead and publish. So that way my changes on my about section, if I click refresh, it fixed itself. And I'm wondering if it would be helpful if you guys could send your YouTube banners to me so that I could look at them and give you feedback. 
Joe says he used my template. Let's see. He's optimized for the mobile audience, helping you become a better writer one video at a time. There's the logo, slow speed skills, motorcycle skill rides, product reviews, motorcycle tips. The only feedback I would give you, Joe, I would switch it so that these are white as well because the black on the orange is a little difficult contrasty wise to read. You don't really need the subscribe button there since nobody can click that anyway, but I love that you've got the merch store um, banner and your Koji uh, page and your Instagram there right clickable in the banner. That is amazing. I can tell that you spent a lot of work on it and I love that it is sized right. Um, are you okay if I share your channel banner with everybody on the stream? I would do something, this is just my, my two cents, with the contrast between your words and your background. I also think that possibly you might just need your value proposition right here because your channel name is right here. Because there's so many words going on, your eyes, like your eyes don't know where to go to look. But if this was big and bold and, and, and beautiful and people knew right away, this is where I go. Like this is, this is it. And I absolutely would put your photo right in that mobile zone. You want your target audience to go, oh yeah, I'm in the right place. Also, might would take the pressure of your um, release date off of you. And since you've not posted any videos yet, if I came here looking for help and it says new videos drop on Thursdays, then I would be like, well, there's no videos yet. You can actually add a little blurb here. You can expect new videos to drop in the dead of the night on Thursdays. I'm wondering if you could do something in that shape and in that color with your value proposition about what you're providing for your channel subscribers and for your channel viewers. Jogo makes a good point. I would adjust the colors in your portrait so it pops more. Yeah, it looks a little faded. I would adjust the saturation, which in Canva, just in case you don't know where that is, and where you can adjust the saturation is by clicking the image that you want to adjust, going to edit image, and right here, there's an adjust button, and right there, you can adjust the saturation and, and change the contrast. And you can even click see all and make other adjustments too, but generally those top three are the adjustments that most people make to images. And of course, so now I've adjusted this one a little bit and you can remove the background either before or after you adjust the image, whatever. You can go a little bit too high on the saturation, but even just a little makes it better. Another way to do it would be to go to edit image and go down here to filters. You can click these filters. Like obviously some of these are a little much. So let's use these solar filter. But guess what? Now when I go to edit image, the adjust has already done some adjusting for me. Get out. Get out of town. I can make some small adjustments here. Uh, to make it even better than just that filter. But the filter gives it a great starting point. One video on your screen is going to be what YouTube recommends. On the other side of the screen is what I think you should watch. See you later. Bye!